You got it locked into New York's best talk, HTLA Radio 1, New York. This program is intended for mature audiences only. If you have any homicidal or suicidal feelings, please consult the doctor before listening to this program. What? <laughs> ah, that's right, Crash Talkers. You're here. I'm here. It's time to get pretty darn serious about here. <laughs> oh, yeah, we got, a, we got a good one for you today on the old Crash Talk gang. Smoke this. Yes, I'm madder than hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. Yes, a whole hour of it. Think you're up to it? Oh, I sure as hell know I am. Talking, of course, about the story about the Arizona State County who has implemented a law, <clears throat> L-A-W, requiring their 2,000 employees to be smoke and nicotine-free and... How they're doing it, you may ask. Yes, how would you do that? Well, you'd have to get doctor's notes and (laughs) urine testing uh, for an entire period of 12 months to prove that you have been nicotine-free to keep your job. And it doesn't stop there. No, if you want to get hired by that county as an employee... You'd have to go the same invasion of privacy, the same invasion of your medical records, and indeed the same invasion of your freaking dignity (laughs) to, uh, of course, even be considered for a job with them now, requiring doctor's notes or pee tests. Yes. Well, we've got a lot of questions on this topic. We've got a lot of stuff going on with this, and... uh, We're going to smack you in the face with it like a cold, wet trout in just a few minutes here on the old Crash Talking program. So, hey, everybody hold on to your butts. It's about to get smoky in here. HTLA Radio 1. HTLA Radio 1 in New York City proudly presents Crash Talk. Welcome to Crash Talk on this, uh, well, this this fancy free Tuesday, December sixteenth, twenty fourteen. I am of host course. I am I am of host here, yes, my lord. I am of course your host of Crash Talk, Chris Crash Jesus Taylor in the HTLA Studio Two Studios tonight in Manhattan uh, for you for your Crash Talk and goodness. And tonight, as I mentioned in the little segue there, is uh, Smoke This. Yes, and it's my official opinion and retort of Arizona's, well, a a small county, to be fair, in Arizona's, uh, well, basic waxing of the uh, democracy in this country. Who needs it? Uh, Freedom? No, never need it. Rights? Forget about them. Privacy? Well, that went out with your rights, didn't it? Yes, it did. Joining me in the booth tonight is the beautiful, the wonderful, bouncy Jenny McCartney. Well, and yes, of of course, the the kids who don't yet smoke but wish they would. (laughs) Ah, that's right, that's right, and that's that's how we roll on Crash Talk here. Yes, we give it to you straight, and we don't pull any punches, and uh, tonight, for sure, 
I'm not going to be uh, pulling any of those. Uh, tonight, uh, the edition of Crash Talk is, of course, brought to you uh, in part by the wonderful fine folks at Tim Hortons New York City, now with eight locations in the city to serve you. And, uh, yeah, yeah, what can I say? You know, if you need coffee, if you need snacks, donuts, wholesome goodness, it's it's all there, and it's always fresh at Tim Hortons. Also, uh, I do need to say that tonight's show is also... Powered by Procast. Yes, yes it is. It is powered by Procast. Yes. The Well, it used to be the Automated and Intelligent Entertainment Industry Database, but now Kate says it's something else, and I can't remember what the hell it was. There you go. That's the the official word tonight from Crash Talk here at HTLA Studio 2 in Manhattan. I don't have a freaking clue, uh, but yeah, Procast is actually still the name of it. That hasn't changed. <laughs> So at least I'm all right so far there. And, um, Jenny, you're going to have to keep up with me on the booth here with the uh, beeps. I know you've got uh, a bunch of them lined up here. Oh, there's one. And another. <laughs> yes, those ones. Because it might get a little explicit in here. Although we are rolling the show without the explicit content warning. Uh-oh. Oh, my God. Or, or however you say that, kids. I don't know, um, but yeah, yeah, it might get a little, might get a little hairy. So we've got the uh, button standing by, <laughs> and we'll we'll just see how good she is with that little beeper. Yes. Okay. Well, as uh, as the story went, as the the report goes, um, a little county. Yes, a little tiny county. It's innocuous. Nobody cares. Nobody will notice. We'll just sneak this one in and everything will be fine. Yeah, not so much, gang. And this is a serious problem. Probably, I would actually venture as saying a more serious problem than the supposed, and I'm going to say supposed, uh, racial wars that were going on uh, recently as of late in the last three or so months with Ferguson, Missouri and Anonymous and the Islamic terrorists and protests and unarmed black teens and all the rest of that good stuff. I, I think, yeah, I, I think, to, to be totally honest with you here, this is more scary this this matters more to Americans, I think, or at least, at the very least, I think it should. Because what I'm about to inform you of, in, in my eloquent crash-talking way, of course, is what? Well, what is it? Really, when you think about it, it is a complete, total, com- absolute disregard for us as Americans, for us as individuals, for us as, hell, I would almost even go so far as to say human beings on this earth. Yeah, I know. Pretty darn serious, isn't it? (laughs) Well, it is, you know, and it's not something that I'm laughing about. I Actually, I'm kind of laughing at just the sheer outrage <laughs> that, you know, if I if I don't get this off my chest properly in this show tonight, I, I just might go out and, you know, slay several people with cutting wounds. <laughs> uh, yes, and if you didn't catch uh, coffee and cigarettes uh, a little earlier, 7 p.m., we actually finally went on, thanks to Kanye West's ass. I alluded to it a bit there in that show, but, uh, you know, promised to take it to the the mat, of course, here. So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. And, of course, the issue, let's let's go over the issue first. That's maybe what I should do. I'm going to go over the issue first here in this first segment, give you all the facts, and then just absolutely unload with all the things wrong with this. And why I care as a smoker, obviously, but why you should care as an American. If you don't smoke, good for you. If you don't drink and drive, awesome for you. If you don't drink, even better for you. If you don't own guns, perfect for you. 
If you don't care about anything, good for you too. But I don't think that's very many Americans. <laughs> Somebody cares about something out there. Everybody cares about something out there. And you can't tell me that not every single one of you out there listening to my voice does not care about their privacy. Or complete, total lack thereof. Yes, absolutely. But this story and this move by this county in Arizona is putting the rest of the state and the rest of the states at risk of adopting similar laws to this. And what happens then, I guess, would be the ultimate question. So <clears throat> allow me to take down some fine Timmies first. Mm. <clears throat> yes, thank you. Take down some Timmies and maybe a little... Uh, Mm. Ah, yes, the, the golden flavors of Virginia Slims. No, <laughs> we don't smoke Virginia Slims here. I'm kidding. But what is the actual story that's got Crash so riled, you may ask? Well, I will tell you. <clears throat> it's a story that actually came out December 15th at 3 o'clock Eastern about the Arizona Republic. Mm -hmm. It's something that happened in Arizona County. The report is the county is set to vote this week on whether to continue to hire smokers as county employees. During a meeting uh, today, actually, the Pima County Board of Supervisors... Not today, actually. I'm a moron. Jeez, I can't even rant right. I'm so pissed about this. During a meeting last Tuesday, thank you, the Pima County Board mm -hmm, of Supervisors will vote. Oh, no, no, it was this Tuesday. See, I'm, I'm just totally pissed. I'm so mad I can't see. <laughs> I can't see. Any kids? Anybody? <laughs> Blinded by the smokers. Yeah. Well, during a meeting Tuesday, the Pima County Board of Supervisors will vote on the proposal to have the county government turn away job applicants who smoke. The proposal would impose a 30% health insurance surcharge on county employees who do smoke starting in July, said Jeff Nordenson, the county's communications director. The primary thing they are trying to do is twofold, said Nordenson. One is have concern for employees, and two help lower the cost of providing benefits for our employees and for the taxpayers. Yes. It's all about cost-saving measures. Mm. Ah, fine cigarettes, yes. <clears throat> the county estimates it will save $13.4 million a year in tobacco-related expenses if the vote passes according to the Pena County memo. The demographics and cost effect of some smokers is just amazingly high, Nordenson said. Pima County's initial proposal, released in July, required all county employees to prove that they are tobacco and nicotine-free with a drug test. But that sense has changed, Nordenson said. They, there are no mandatory drug tests for everybody as of yet, he said. New employees, however, would have to certify that they are tobacco and nicotine-free for at least a year, with either a doctor's certification based on the person's uh, medical records or drug tests, Nordenson said. Current employees will need to verify that they have been tobacco-free for at least 12 months if they don't want to pay the 30% surcharge, Nordenson said. The county will drug test only if, if an employee is caught smoking or if there is a reasonable belief that an employee is smoking. The county estimates 32% of its more than 2,000 workers are tobacco users. However, some say the proposal essentially prohibiting employees from smoking on their personal time could be seen as discrimination. Well, really? Yeah, it sure could be. <laughs> yes. Now, <clears throat> let's kind of go over the, the Charter of Rights, if you will, the Constitution. Yes, that fine document that apparently 
makes up the sum and total of the basis of the foundation of this country, this democracy. But oh wait, with all of Obama's executive orders and memos, it's a dictatorship, isn't it? Well, we don't want to use that D word, especially on the radio. There we go. So uh, we'll move along here. Now, <clears throat> the first thing, the first thing that leaps out to me from this story is this isn't a company. You know, it's not Bob's house of uh, wax mannequins or Bill's, you know, carpets and upholstery. No. This also isn't a Fortune 500 company. No. No, this is a Pima County Yes, this is a municipal county. A little bit lower level government, of course, than state, but how far lower? And will the state adopt these policies and move forward with them if they have any success at this level? Now think about what they're really saying here. The proposal to have the county government turn away job applicants who smoke cigarettes. Now just that may not seem so bad. You, you might be sitting there going, well, you know, Crash, you, you're at HTLA, you're, you're smoking your brains out all day long there, everything's fine for you, but, you know, there's another world out here and there's rules that apply. You know, not all of us have the good fortune of owning radio stations and other media empires and, and all of those good things. Well, absolutely not. You're right. But I'm not pissed about it for me. I don't care. This is my company. This is my studio. Am I going to turn away non-smokers from potentially working at HTLA? Absolutely not. But they're going to get full disclosure and transparency when it comes to the fact that, yes, if you're working in this studio, you'll be working in a smoking environment. Just so you're aware. If you have a problem with that, there's the door, and you can go on continuing looking for work. But we would certainly never turn away a non-smoker to come and fill a position at HTLA based on, oh, I don't know, they drink go-go juice. Yes, do you drink go-go juice? I want a drug test to make sure over the last 12 months you have not consumed any go-go juice because we don't like it. That's bad for you, you know. Go-go juice has, you know, 86% sugar in it and, you know, it reports that it's no fat, but all that sugar turns immediately to fat in your body. They don't tell you that. But we know that, so that's why we hate go-go juice. So if you're going to be drinking go-go juice, or if you have in the last year, you're not working for us. That raises a whole bunch of other problems now, doesn't it? Well, discrimination, right off the top of the... Right off the top of there, that's a discrimination is the D word. <clears throat> yes, it is. The D word. Yeah. But what does discrimination really mean? There's a question for you. Well, discrimination, quite simply, is just the difference between. Yeah. So if you're a white man, and I'm looking at you and another man who's a black man for the same job, and you both have equal qualifications and experience, and I just like the white man better because I can relate to him more, he, he's going to blend with my team better, and uh, that's the guy I'm going to choose... That is discrimination. Anytime there is a choice made over anything, discrimination is involved because it's assessing the differences and assessing the benefits. That's essentially the definition of the word. And based on those assessments, you make your choice. Now, the black man is just going to go to the NAACP or wherever the hell he's going to go and raise a federal lawsuit and, and sue us into oblivion because I didn't pick him. Where is the business owner's right to pick who they want to work in their workplace? Well, you don't have that anymore because we're all equal. Well, that being the case, every single applicant that comes through my door then, I should hire on the spot for the same job. And that'll kill my business because I'd be having, you know, endless amounts of employees coming through the door. Anybody who ever came through the door of HTLA, I would have to hire immediately and give them a job. That's right. Because I advertised, you know, I need a, a media editor. Boom! There's 250 applicants. Damn it, now i got to hire all of them for fear of being hit with a discrimination suit. 
That, my friends, is problem number one with this. Now, let's move on to problem number two, Arizona, shall we? The proposal would impose a 30% health insurance surcharge on county employees who smoke starting in July. Well, let me understand this. Is this a 30% health insurance surcharge that the health insurance company is charging said employee for a greater risk of the insurance policy? If that's the case, well, okay, but how is it any of their business if I smoke or not? If my medical records indicate, which they don't, any smoking-related issues, then how does my personal choice to smoke a cigarette drink a fifth of Jack Daniels on a Saturday, or indeed have unprotected sex, any of that insurance company's business. It's not. And now who is going to determine whether I need to pay 30% more of my health insurance company? Or is it something that the county is imposing on county employees? Well, that's exactly what it is. Quote, the proposal would impose a 30% health insurance surcharge on county employees who smoked starting in July, said Jeff Nordenson, the county's communications director. He is speaking for the county when he is saying this. He is saying they are charging a 30% health insurance surcharge. Really? Where does that money go? Just asking, because uh, <laughs> the insurance company's not getting it. You're putting on an insurance surcharge on your employees who smoke starting in July. That's your choice. That's not the insurance company. (sighs) Problem number six. How does your employer have the right to charge you 30% over whatever the insurance company is charging for your insurance premium? How how do they have the right to do that? And, And indeed... They don't have the right to your medical records. They don't have a right to your medical history. They don't have a right to a a, a doctor's note or anything else that your doctor writes. And they certainly don't have a right to know what you do in your personal spare time. They just don't. And I'm not talking about a, you know, an axe murderer and smoker like me who who will down 3 in an hour. No. I'm talking about the person who, you know, maybe goes through a pack a day, maybe 16 cigarettes, you know, can actually have one in the morning on their way to work and then just not have one till lunchtime and then just not have one till the end of the day. There's a lot of people out there like that. Well, if you work for that county, all 420 of you, roughly, um, What's it like to have all of your privacy stripped away? What's it like to have your medical records become essentially public knowledge because your employer is imposing this? What's that like? I'll tell you one thing. It's scary as hell. (laughs) But this isn't all of the show, gang. We've got a lot more to cover, so uh, stick with us. We'll be back in just two minutes. You're listening to Crash Talk with Christopher John Taylor, a.k.a. Crash Jesus, on HCLA Radio 1, New York. I stood outside assessing the situation. I knew it could be rough in there, but how rough, there was no way to know for sure. Hey, guys. Daddy, it's pink! But hey, a new house, it's a blank (laughs) canvas, and we got a great one. Thanks to a really low mortgage rate from Navy Federal Credit Union. You pink. So she's a princess. You got a problem with that? Hoorah! Hoorah! Four million members, four million stories. Navy Federal Credit Union. White Rum has a new captain. Introducing the all-new Captain Morgan White Rum. Five times distilled for a smoother taste. 
The apocalypse is coming. Will it be aliens, zombies, or a global financial meltdown? Whatever it is, you need to be prepared. Get your complete apocalypse kit at Ammunition. Contains foodstuffs and alcohol for three months. A massive array of armaments. Water purifier so you can drink your own urine. And cyanide pills so you can go out like a man. Don't dial 911. Dial 357. Ammunition. Protecting your rights. It was 9 a.m. The phone rang. Commando pest eradication. You saw a bug on your child's apple? Code red, boys. We got a live one. Your home, much like the rest of the world, is infested with unwanted vermin. Commando Pest Eradication will wage war on nature, so you don't have to. Hello, ma'am. Thank God you're here! I saw a bug in the kitchen! You did the right thing, ma'am. We'll take it from here. Everything's gonna be okay. Commando Pest Eradication uses only the most lethal chemicals to rid your home of unwanted life. Our team is composed of military-trained professionals that know how to take care of a messy situation fast. After successfully defoliating Vietnam, we've turned our attention to the home front. Your home front. We've got the situation in the kitchen contained, sir. But I found this. <laughs> Jesus, what the hell is this? That's my daughter! Looks more like Viet Cong to me. Commando Pest Eradication. We kill everything in sight, so you feel safer. It's the war on nature, and this time, we're winning. If only the world was less like this. I could use a smoke. Hey, put that out! And more like this. I could use a smoke. You murderer! I might have children one day! Smoking kills, unless you kill first. If you're around a smoker, you will die. Smokers may look relaxed and like they're having fun. Don't believe it. Vote yes on Proposition 421. Let's outlaw smoking everywhere, even in people's homes, and allow honest citizens to legally kill anyone who smokes. Let's live in a world without smokers. Prohibition works. Let's prove it. Let's move up the food chain. It's time to smoke the smokers. Vote yes on Proposition 421. you got it locked into New York's best talk, HTLA Radio 1, New York. From all of us at HTLA Radio 1, New York, happy holidays. Well, there you go. Oh, yeah. Welcome back to the second segment there of Crash Talk at HTLA Radio 1, New York. 46 degrees in the Central Park right now. Still a downpour, rain city. Well, I guess that's how we grow the apples around the Big Apple. Uh, yeah, December 16th. What is that now? Eight more shopping days until the Big C. Oh, yeah. And yes, you may have noticed in that last commercial break, I'm bringing back the, uh, the Crash Talk commercials that we all know and love. Uh, I'm not going to play those other ones. They don't pay me enough, damn it. <laughs> ah, and they're just they're just perfect for this show, so they're staying. Ah, that's right. I've, I've told Jenny that's the way it is. That's the way it is. She just stand there. That's it. Damn it. Well, thank you for coming back to the uh, second quarter here. <laughs> a little football terminology for you there. Uh, on Crash Talk's Tuesday Smoke This episode... Yes. And we're blasting out to you on iHeart, Stitcher, iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube. Uh, man, iHeart, did I mention it? Yeah. We're just everywhere these days. HTLA is really growing. And don't forget, HTLAradio1.com. That's the number one. And don't forget, in January 1st, yes, New Year's Day, HTLA Radio 2. Dot com and that's the number two not two yeah uh, also oh yeah big news big news the new forums gang yeah head yourself on over to radio the number one New York dot proboards dot com that is the new official HTLA radio network New York yes the HTLA R N and why, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> There's too, too many damned 
letters. I, I'm, I'm confused. But hey, radio, the number one, New York dot proboards dot com. Go there, check it out, sign up. All it takes is your email address in a minute and a half, not even. And you'll get access to forums for every single show across the HTLA network from HTLA Radio 1 through 5. Uh, there's also forums there to get in touch with all of the hosts at the HTLA family. Uh, also, uh, places to post for just your general stuff. You can uh, go into the listeners forum, post your own promotions for things in your local areas, and we'll uh, do our best to get links out on appropriate websites, that kind of good stuff. It's just a good community to whip on over, sign up with, and, and tune in. Uh, yes, there is a player on the forums, of course. You can tune in even to the live shows. And at the bottom of the forums, you'll even find a really slick, sexy little shout box chat room right there. All ready for your listener interaction. You can hang out with the rest of the listeners and tell them what you really think of us here at HTLA. Because <laughs> that's always fun. Yeah. So, welcome back to the big program. Uh, of course, we're talking about I've had enough of the smoking and I can't deal it. No. Cannot deal, baby. No. We're just done. <laughs> I, I've had enough. I, I can't take it anymore. I need another cigarette. Hang on. Mm. Mm. That's some good microphones there. MXLmics.com, yes? If you want to reproduce and get the beautiful golden tones uh, that you're getting through my lovely pipes right now... You want to go over to mxlmics.com, check out their fine selection of everything from broadcast mics that we use here, all the way down to the, the bands and, and, God, they've got wireless mics, they've got lavaliers, they've got, uh, well, they've even got mics for filmmaking. God, they, they cover everything. Uh, mics for performance, for DJing. You, when, when it comes to mics, you just want to go there. Trust me. There you go. Now, moving on with the old show tonight, of course, we're talking about the uh, the smoking dealio. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's smoking bans all over the United States, of course, because in preparation for the show, I, I did some more up-to-the-date research here on the way things are looking in the old smoking world. And they're kind of interesting. You know, we've got statistics that uh, kids aged 12 to 17 uh, in New York City are smoking. It's on the rise. It's back up to 19.3% in the city right now of, of kids between the ages of, actually it's 14 to 25, but um, it, it's getting popular again. And that's, of course, because, and I, I actually kind of covered this every time I cover smoking, It's because when you tell teens that something's bad, you're just drawing them closer to it. Oh, don't listen to that rock music. That's the music of the devil. Oh, don't smoke cigarettes. That's that's the gateway to drugs. Well, don't do drugs because that's the gateway to drugs. <laughs> and what do they do every time? Yeah. Don't drink. God, no. That'll lead to alcoholism Child abuse, sexual abuse, and, and beating your wife on a Saturday night watching the football game. Whatever. But we're talking specifically tonight about Arizona and one of their counties who are putting it to 2,000 of their own county employees in Arizona with regards to smoking. Making it mandatory for them to report and show physical evidence, proof, from either their doctor and your medical records that you have been smoke-free for over a year, or provide on-the-spot and previous drug testing, urine tests, showing that indeed you don't have any nicotine, any of that evil N. Yes, the, the evil N. Yeah. Do you have any of the evil N? No. Well, <clears throat> the, here's, here's, we're going to go on now with, with the bigger problem. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, there's a bigger problem. Aside from, you know, your right to privacy and your, well, right to anything through the Constitution, and if you're in Canada, your Charter of Rights, which, of course, in both countries, the Supreme Court strikes down certain sections of said Constitution and said Charter of Rights uh, whenever it suits them. They do, because they, they need to, apparently, to uphold other sections of other laws, and it's just a big pooch screw. But... Oh, that's good. When Arizona, when a government body, I don't care how small they are, decides that they're going to get urine tests from you, drug testing, to see whether you're a smoker or not, what they're not telling you is that they're going to get results back, of course, for everything. They're not just paying for that lab test that's going to give them one result. It'll give them everything. So they'll know if you drink that bottle of wine on a Thursday. They'll know if you smoke the occasional pot. They'll know if you're smoking crack. And that's an infringement of your privacy, isn't it? See, in this country, in America, you're supposed to, you're supposed to be able to have the assumption of responsibility and I know, I know, responsibility is a big word, and you all think you should have rights, but none of you want the responsibility. That's half the problem with this country right now. But I'm telling you, you you have the responsibility. If you, Me being an employer, I don't care if my staff smokes crack. Mm-hmm. You heard me. I'll say it again. I'll say it till the end of time. I don't care if my staff smokes crack. Do you know why? There's, there's a very good and, and simple reason for it. And it goes against the PC party line. Mm -mm -mm. Sorry for all these pauses. I'm smoking. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It goes against the PC party line. Why? Because I move under the assumption, I live and breathe under the assumption that we're all responsible for our own actions. Now, let's say you're a host for me here at HTLA. Yes. Okay, so you're, you're a host. Now, you smoke crack. Yeah. Well, you'd pretty much have to to work for us here at HTLA, but... Ah, oh, come on, that was good. But let's say you're, you're a host. You smoke crack on the weekends. Maybe you're a... Yeah, what do they call that? A, a leisure crack smoker? A, a part-time? I don't know. But you smoke crack on the weekends. That's great. You come in every every Monday at... 8 a.m. or 6 a.m. or 2 p.m. or whenever the hell you come in to do your shows. You come on in here and you sit down and you're professional and you're good with the other employees and you bang out a hell of a good show, like I'm doing now, apparently. And you get up, your show's done, you're out of here. And then Tuesday comes along and you do it again, and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you keep doing it. Well, damn, son, that's what I pay you for. That's good. You keep doing that. Now you go and smoke your crack on Saturday and Sunday. Do I care? Nope. No, sir. No, ma'am. Don't care. You smoke crack, you can go do gangbangs. Hell, you can videotape it. You can stick it on YouTube. You can do anything you want. Just don't do it wearing an HTLA t-shirt, <laughs> if you're doing the gangbang video. And um, <clears throat> rest assured, when you come in on Monday again and to do your show, you're clean and clear and ready to go and... Have that element of professionalism, and dare I say the word responsibility again. Yeah. And you come and you give us another hell of a good show. Do I have a problem with that? No. Why? Because I am your boss at HTLA Radio 1. That's right. Or 2 or 3 or 17 or whatever the hell it is. But that that's all I care about. That's all I've hired you for. And you come in and you do that job dil diligently every day, every week, no problem. Why do I have a problem? I don't. So why the hell am I going to have a problem if you say to me, uh, Crash, can I step out back for a few minutes have a cigarette? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Yes, you can leave the PC crap outside when you come into the hallowed halls of HTLA because we don't care about that. We care about you showing up, doing your best, having a good time, but no professional quality product. That's it. End of story. On your own time, gangbangs, crack pipe.
Hell, 40 is a wine. Who cares? You fill your boots. And where the responsibility to HTLA begins and ends is Monday, when you start your shift, and when you end your shift. And then Tuesday, when you come in and start your shift, and you end your shift. Everything else that, that we're talking about here is your own personal time, your own personal business. I don't care. Hell, you don't want to know the things I do in my off time. <laughs> So where, where, oh, where does an Alabama, I keep wanting to say Alabama, it should be Alabama, it sounds like it's Alabama, where, where does Arizona get off with one of its counties saying that they're going to piss test you for, for cigarettes? And you can't, as an employee of that corporation, you can't have nicotine in your body for the last 12 months. And you... Yes, the onus is on you to prove that to them. What about those 420 people that, that have jobs there currently? What happens when they get fired? <laughs> Let's think about that. Let's think about what happens when the health insurance company realizes that that county is charging its employees a 30% tariff on top of the health insurance uh, surcharge. And, and they're not getting that money. The insurance company isn't getting that money. You're, you're skimming. You're, you're committing mafia stuff here. They're called crimes. You're skimming off the top is what you're doing. All because they're, they're filthy smokers. Yeah. The primary thing they're trying to do is twofold. One is to have concern for the employees and two help lower the cost of providing benefits for our employees for the taxpayers. Yes, because you, little county, are so concerned about the cost to the taxpayer, aren't you? I hate to break it to you. This is this just in. Yeah, this is some news for you here. No government, no matter how small in this country, to no matter how big in this country, or indeed Canada, I will include them too, gives two iotas of care about the bill to the taxpayers. Because clearly, if that was the case, we wouldn't be facing a $528 trillion debt in this country, would we? No, because the taxpayers would have had a problem with that and stopped it. Yeah, so don't hide under the taxpayer, guys. Oh, and one is to have concern for the employees. You, you're concerned about your employees. Well... <clears throat> That's a little bit like taking AR-15 gun manufacturers to court for the murders other people commit with their weapons. And again, as to that whole story this week, um, I would submit that Chevrolet needs to be taken to court too because he drove a car to that place to go kill those people. He drove a car, and it was a Chevrolet. So clearly... The company who made the car is just as culpable as the company who made the gun. The, the, the guy is irrelevant. We just let him go. Why is there a manhunt? <laughs> we shouldn't be hunting down the man. We should be hunting down that car and that rifle. We should spank their little butts and, and put them in cuffs and take those companies to court, right? Because that's what we're doing. That's what we're saying we want. That's what we're saying is the direction we should be going completely retarded. And you never, never, never go the full retard. We know this. In the Pima County initial proposal released in July, it required all county employees to prove that they're tobacco and nicotine free with a drug test. But that has since changed to include, we'll accept a doctor's note. Now, ignoring the fact that you actually have to pay for a doctor's note, in incurring cost by the employees for some requirement the employer has because the employers are in the driver's seat and they own you? Yeah. You want to talk about a racial thing? Let's talk about this as it pertains to race. When was the last time companies, corporations, or small business owned people? Oh, wait, that was slavery. 
Oh, and that was 200 years ago, isn't it? And and that's something we're supposed to be really against now. Goddamn Ferguson. Yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> again, we want the rights of slavery, but not the responsibility. Mm-hmm. Figure that crap out. Let me go for our second lovely commercial break. You're going to love this one. And when I come back, I'll be getting more into the uh, drug test side of things. Back in two. You're listening to Crash Talk with Christopher John Taylor, a.k.a. Crash Jesus, on HCLA Radio 1, New York. your kids to be safe so you give them a mobile phone what are they going to do when they get attacked throw it at someone why not force the state to keep us all protected by arming everybody the senile old lady in her home the three-year-old on the playground the priest in his church we think everybody should carry weapons at all times that way nobody gets hurt it's a proven fact where there's more guns there are less shootings vote yes on Proposition 45. Mandatory concealed carry for everybody. The nuclear deterrent won the Cold War. Let's use the same logic and win the war on crime. Proposition 45. Teach your kids to protect themselves. Tommy, who is that naked man in your room? That's Jack. He's my new friend I met on the internet. The internet may appear like the future, but it's really a cyber optic predator's playground. Nine out of ten children who get on the internet are preyed upon by perverts, sickos, and society at large. This message brought to you by Citizens United Negating Technology for Life and People's Safety. We're going to take a break. Don't touch that dial. Too fat and lazy to come pick up a bazooka? Log on and have it at your door the next morning. Log on to ammunition.net. Try our motion-sensitive cluster bombs and shoot to maim automated firing gun turrets, which come ready to assemble in 284 easy parts. Ammunition.net also has a full line of generators so you can keep your fridge running and the beer cold through extended apocalypse. Need to stock up fast? The strongest will survive with our all-in-one Y2K kit featuring a tractor trailer load of lager beer, redwood cigarettes, and enough firepower and ammunition ammunition to level a small country jesus y2k it's coming and you'd better be ready log on to ammunition.net now protecting your rights online until death do us part gosh i remember that day like it was yesterday jennifer looked so beautiful i knew i'd love her forever and then she was driving along a canyon and her brakes went out I'm moving on now and remarried someone half my age. God, I love banging her. I started my life over with Crimson Executive Spouse Indemnity Services. Life can be uncertain and you never know when your wife will be tragically taken away. Crimson set me up with a huge life insurance policy on my wife. I can't have her back, but now I have a second home. I was devastated when I found out my wife was cheating on me, and even more so when she fell underneath the train. I was nowhere near at the time, and my phone records proved that. My life changed forever. I was a real mess for hours. Thankfully, the week before, I'd met with Crimson. Thanks to Crimson, I've had a penile augmentation and am much more confident with women. Thank you, Crimson. To have a Crimson Planning for the Future kit faxed to you, just dial 1-866-505-CRIM. If only the world was less like this. I could use a smoke. Hey, put that out! And more like this. I could use a smoke. You murderer! I might have children one day! Smoking kills, unless you kill first. If you're around a smoker, you will die. Smokers may look relaxed and like they're having fun. Don't believe it. Vote yes on Proposition 421. Let's outlaw smoking everywhere, even in people's homes, and allow honest citizens to legally kill anyone who smokes. Let's live in a world without smokers. Prohibition works. Let's prove it. Let's move up the food chain. It's time to smoke the smokers. Vote yes on Proposition 421. you got it locked into New York's best talk, HTLA Radio 1, New York. From all of us at HTLA Radio 1, New York, happy holidays! Uh, welcome back to the show. I'm so glad you came and hung around. 
We're broadcasting live from Idaho, out in the farm, and it's real good of you to join us and talk about the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm I'm freaking kidding. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, that was that was a joke there. I thought I'd just kind of go with the mood of the the comeback music there. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the the technical term? Never mind. Who cares? You are listening to HTLA Radio 1, of course, and this is Tuesday Night's Crash Talk. Tonight's show, Smoke This. Yes, I'm madder than hell, and I'm not going to take it anymore. That's why I started HTLA all those years ago. Yes, it was just so I could sit here and smoke. Yeah. And hire big-titted blondes to work in my sound booth and bounce through the window. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what it's all about. It's not this, you can't smoke, you can't drink, you can't smoke crack, you can't have animal sex on YouTube. Well, you know, I'm Canadian, but I came to this country believing we had the right to smoke crack and have animal sex on YouTube. And goddammit, I will defend that to the death. Yes, I will. Mark my words. As soon as they, as soon as they give this Canadian his gun license, I'll, I'll get right on that. <laughs> anyway, it is 46 degrees right now, Central Park. Thank you for that beautiful, beautiful comeback there, Sam. Yes, we hired the pianist from Casablanca. He's, uh, well, he's 132 years old now, but uh, we're going to be celebrating his 133rd next week in Times Square. And yes, you can bet we will cover that live on HTLA Special Events. And, uh, and we got Steve Vai and the boys now rocking us back in here with uh, a little more, I don't know, a little more crash music. That's it. Yeah, December 16th, almost Christmas. Yeah. Oh, by the way, how'd you like that little uh, holiday cheer thing there? The little insert we got there. That's, that's about as Christmassy as we get, but... If it's not enough for you, you can always go to HTLA Radio, the number one, dot com and uh, get hit right in the face with Santa's Big D. Yes, it's uh, Christmas there is, is there with a vengeance. Anywho, on with the show. On with the show. As we must. Ha ha ha. As all current employees will need to verify that they have been tobacco-free for at least a year. Yes. The county will drug test only if an employee is caught smoking or if there is a, quote, reasonable belief that an employee is smoking. Now, this takes me back to where? Where do you think this takes me back to? Well, a lot of you Crash Talk listeners are, well, a little young for the program. But um, a lot of you aren't. And you know where this takes us back to. This takes us back to internment. This takes us back to communism in the 60s in the United States. Remember that? Yeah. And all you kids who don't remember that, you should go look that up. You should put that Google search engine to the task and look up what we as Americans did to other we as Americans in the 1960s pertaining to communism. We used to turn people in. We used to turn them in to the state police and the FBI. Yes, why? For, quote, reasonable belief of expected or suspected communism. Yeah, so if you didn't like your neighbor Bob, if he put up a pink fence and it clashed with your yellow lawn furniture... You could just call these guys up and they would come and take your neighbor away. Put them in an intern camp for being a suspected communist. And now, almost in, we're less than two weeks away from 2015. We should be flying around in little bubble cars on Jupiter. And what are we doing? Well, we're still pissing around with reporting people if there's a reasonable belief that an employee is smoking or that an employee is a communist sympathizer. It's the same thing. 
Yeah. So of the 2,000 workers at this Arizona county, more than 32% of its workers are tobacco users. They know this. I'm assuming from employees smoking on the premises somewhere, you know, it breaks out the back of the building in a designated smoking area, whatever the current PC crap dictates. And speaking of that PC crap, I had a look. Yes, I did, because I don't just turn on the frickin' mic and go live, like Kate likes to say. No, I actually do research, and in my research, do you know what I found? Uh -huh. Well, I found out that Crash is going to be moving to Virginia. That's what I found out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kid you not. Uh, <clears throat> in California, um, smokers have a real tough go of it there. Nowhere on any beach, any beach, there's not a single beach in the entire state of California that allows smoking. Not a single beach. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, California is a freaking beach. That's that's what it is. It's it's a beach. That's <laughs> and you can't smoke. The, you can't smoke in restaurants. You can't smoke in public places. You can't smoke at the public library. You can't smoke at the the public transit. You can't smoke on the streets. You you know they they even stop you from smoking in your car in most states. Yeah. In Canada, they in implemented a, a rule, I think it was 2007, where uh, you could no longer smoke in your own personal vehicle if you had a child under the age of 16 in the vehicle. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Now, I don't get me wrong. I understand the reasoning behind the idea of that. But as we covered in the first segment of Crash Talk tonight, what did we learn? Well, if you tell teenagers something is bad for them, they gravitate towards it. Well, rock music is the work of the devil. Oh, dude, we love rock music. Well, don't smoke cigarettes. They're bad for you. Everybody's smoking. Don't smoke pot. It's the gateway drug to all sorts of things in Vietnam. Everybody's smoking pot. Yeah, yeah. Don't do that, kids. Oh, they all do it. Hasn't anybody learned <laughs> just basic, basic psychology? You know, <clears throat> any parents should know this. You should, you know, you don't just lay down a bunch of rules for your kid and say, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do that, and you can't do that. Oh, here's your room, here's your computer, leave me alone. You can't do that. That's not parenting. What you need to be doing is growing with your child. Yeah, you probably never heard that term before. I don't think I've even heard that term before. I just came up with it right now, based on my own experience with my own kids. You have to grow with the child, and, and when I say that, you know, you, you have a child, and they're a baby, and, and you're an adult, so you think you've got all the answers. Well, you don't. Start to finish, your life is growth, whether you like to admit it or not. And yes, some people are retards and just stagnate, and die incomplete. And that's on them. Some of them don't even know they're missing anything. They're that de-evolved. But you're supposed to actually grow as a human being, as a little soul driving this meat skeleton that's called your body. According to Stephen Hawking and other people in the know, there's something beyond this little life thing that we've got going on down here. And we're supposed to be getting greater as souls. And no, I'm not talking about Jesus again. <laughs> this isn't a religious show. But you need to grow as a person right until the moment you die. And part of that growth, actually a huge part of that growth, should come from raising your children. And as soon as you learn that when you tell your child, no, that's bad for you, no, that will hurt you, no, don't do it, you know they're going to because you did all those years ago. We as a society need to take more responsibility for ourselves. We need to take more responsibility for our children. And we need to actually learn from the things that go on around us every day and not just keep staring at a little five-inch screen on our iPhone. 
And we're not just staring at our tablet, or not just staring at our TV or our computers, or indeed listening to some ranting fool talk about... Never mind, that's my show. Um, yeah. <clears throat> no, but getting back to the point, I think you're with me on this. Well, turns out Virginia, the state of Virginia, is completely lax in all of these anti-public smoking laws. Yes, they are. In fact, that's why Crash is going to move to Virginia. Yes, because you can actually smoke there. You can smoke in your car. They, they respect your ability and responsibility as a parent enough to let you handle your children the way you see fit. They still do that there. I think you can even ride a bicycle without a helmet, knee pads, and elbow pads. I believe so. But every other state, everywhere, they're just ban city. And why is that? Why is Virginia so lax, you might ask? Well, hey, <laughs> Uncle Daddy Crash has got the answer to that, too. Yes, he does. Where do you think all those big tobacco companies are based? You know, when I made that little joke about me smoking Virginia Slims earlier, that should have been the uh, the clue for you. Yes, Virginia, that would be the state, of course. <laughs> and what do you think the lobbyists did in setting up their companies there all those tens of decades ago? They paid the price, yes, the handoff. The lobbyist wad o cash to make government succumb to their wants and needs as tobacco corporations. Uh huh. There you go. So, that, my friends, is exactly why you have a situation where the government in that state is so lenient on smoking. It's because the government of that state is largely funded by smoking. So that's all the time for me tonight on this Tuesday Smoke This. I, I, I have more, but yeah, I tended to rant a little bit and, oh, I don't know, dare say tried to make the uh, show a little bit, uh, well, what's the word? Entertaining. <laughs> but one final parting thought, I think. Yeah. If you think it's okay... There you go. Okay, thanks. If you think it's okay for the company you work for to tell you what you can and can't do in life and want you to prove it, then you have a good sleep tonight. And for those of you out there who are like me, can't stand the absolute outrage that is going on with this and is just waiting for the other shoe to drop where all corporations impose the complete lack of privacy, the complete lack of workers' rights, the complete lack of everything, well, you'll probably be up with me later. And there you go. That's it for tonight. Uh, check out Coffee and Cigarettes tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern, and I am out of here. you got it locked into New York's best talk, HTLA Radio 1, New York. From all of us at HTLA Radio 1, New York, happy holidays!